Welcome back to our channel on One Stop Academy. It's Alison. Today's tutorial is on problem solving and algorithms. I'm sure this is a popular terminology which you've come across over time. At the end of this tutorial, you should understand how problem solving is done. You should also understand the concept of algorithms as a means of problem solving. Also, you should understand the stages involved in algorithm development and then, in addition, you should be able to develop algorithms for simple problems at the end of this tutorial. Our problem solving. Basically, problem solving is all about defining a problem. To define a problem, there are components involved in the task and these components are first finding the origin of the problem. Even in your day to day activities, problems come up, and those problems may be because of so many different reasons. So you have to brainstorm and say what exactly caused this problem. If you're driving and then your car suddenly comes to a halt, you start thinking. Am I out of gas? Is something wrong with the tires? And so on and so forth. So that's about finding the origin of the problem, finding the cause of the problem. The second step is identifying the surest solution to the problem. Okay, so if I am out of gas, what do I do? Do I have spare gas or do I have to take an alternative route to get gas? and then come back to my car and put the gas and then move, and so on and so forth. So identifying the surest solution to the problem. And then organizing the solution in steps. And then lastly, implementing the solution. Implementing the solution has to do with carrying out that which you have thought out as the solution. So if the problem is, if the solution is getting gas, then you have to come out from your car and then get a gallon and then go get gas. So that's about implementing the solution. The whole aim of designing computers, the whole reason why computers came into existence is because of problems. If you refer to a video tutorial on history of computers, you would see that the need for computers started with just basic computing or calculating. Um, there was need to calculate numbers and then there was need to store those results. And then the different needs um, continued rising. And up until now, technology is moving because problems come up every day. So from basic storing numbers, we've gotten to this point of using big data and storing not only numbers but pictures, um, moving pictures, and sound, and biometric data. So that's about how the computer was designed to solve problems. So there wouldn't be computers if there was no need to solve problems. Now, this leads to the big question. Since the computer is only a machine, it can solve problems on its own, right? So how does it get to do all those? How does it get to store um, all the data that it stores? How does it get to take information? How does it get to do all the amazing stuff that it does? So let's see. Now, algorithms. To make a computer do anything, you have to give it instruction it's not a computer is not like a human being that is spontaneous and that can perform actions without you know prompt a computer has to be prompted and the prompt is instruction the computer has to be given in instructions and these instructions have to be exact these instructions have to be step by step so to get a computer to do something, you have to tell the computer exactly what you want it to do in a precise order. And then, not only telling the computer what to do, you also have to tell the computer how to do it. You get So, 
when after a problem has been identified someone called a computer programmer has to think of a way to solve the problem so that task of telling the computer what to do and how to do what it has to do belongs to a computer programmer so basically a computer programmer is a person who writes programs um later in this course you're going to get to know about computer programs so a computer programmer is someone who um, writes computer programs and writing computer programs is all about telling the computer what to do and how to do it yeah so the, the programmer also translates this solution into distinct well-defined steps now these distinct well-defined steps is what we refer to as algorithms so, and these steps are put down in terms of simple operations that a computer can perform. Like I said, a computer follows specific instruction, exact instructions, and these instructions are what it follows to do what it does. So, if you want to get a specific definition of an algorithm, an algorithm is a sequence of instructions designed for a computer to follow in order to solve a particular problem. A sequence of instructions that tells you order order right designed for a computer to follow in order to solve a particular problem so for every problem there is a particular solution so you can't carry a solution for problem a and use it to solve a, a solve problem B you get so every problem is matched with its own specific solution there are qualities of a good algorithm. Everybody can just scribble down something and call it an algorithm. But there is there are things to look out for when you are looking for a good algorithm. And they include that it has to be precise and clear. I have said that many times in this slide. It has to be precise. Precise, you could say exact. You could say straight to the point. No beating around the bush. Just Give it what to do. It has to be precise and clear. No gibberish. No, you know, unclear terminologies and all. And then, in addition, it must lead to the desired result after it has been implemented. So, if your car stops and then you decide that the problem is that you've run out of gas, and then you go to the um, station, you get gas. You go to the gas station, you get gas, you come back to your car, you refill, and then you try to start the car and it doesn't start. Then you know that, I mean, the problem at first wasn't that you ran out of gas. So you start looking for another solution. So that process is about finding the best algorithm that will solve a particular problem and that will lead it to getting desired results. Now, to better understand algorithms, let's use examples. We pick a problem. There are actually two problems in this tutorial. The first one is the problem of making a hot cup of co coffee. Making a hot cup of coffee. The steps involved in the solution in solving this problem are five steps. The first step is pouring water into a kettle. We pour water into a kettle. The next step is to heat up the water. And then... Third step is to put an appropriate amount of coffee into an empty cup. The fourth step is to pour the heated water into the cup. And then the last step is to add sugar to taste. Now, if you follow these five steps, you will most likely produce a good, delicious, hot cup of coffee. But you should note also that somebody else might solve this particular problem following a different order that is following a different um, number of steps or arrangements of these steps a person may decide to put the coffee into the cup first then pour water into the kettle and then heat up the kettle and then when the water is heated up pour the water into the cup so you see the difference in this case step three has been moved to become step one you understand so the main aim is getting the problem solved. An algorithm could solve a problem 
and another algorithm could solve the same problem but then as long as the put lead to getting the solution each of the algorithms each of the different algorithms which, which could solve this problem will have different costs of course so that is it for the problem of making a hot cup of coffee another problem is finding the average of four numbers this is a more serious problem a more mathematical problem the first step is accepting the numbers now for this algorithm the input that is what will be put in to solve the problem are the four numbers and we're taking the four numbers to be w x y and z so in in other words w x y and z would represent the four numbers which would be supplied as input to the computer the first step is accepting the numbers w x y and z the next step is calculating the sum so you know to to calculate the average of numbers you sum the, you you get the sum of the numbers and you divide that sum by how many numbers there are so if you have four numbers to find the average of those four numbers you have to add them up and then divide by four the second step is calculating the sum of the four numbers and the third step is dividing that sum by four the next step is storing the results you've gotten after dividing the sum. You store the results as AVG, that's average. By using average would be used to store the result from step 3 in memory. And step 5 is to display the value of the average. Of course, you know um, in computing, if a problem is solved, and if the user doesn't know that the problem has been solved, it doesn't make any difference. No? Yes, so there has to be input and then there has to be output. It's a give and take. You've heard of the terminology. What you give is what you get. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. Yes, so there has to be output of some sort. And then when the user has been given the average, the algorithm comes to an end it has solved the problem right so also somebody else might solve this particular problem somebody else might find the average of four numbers following a different form of steps either a different number of steps or a different arrangement of steps yep so you're gonna have to try to see if you've grasped how algorithms work there have we've been given two um, exercises. The first one is to write an algorithm to calculate the square of a given number and then the second task is to write an algorithm to calculate simple interest. If you do not know how to calculate simple interest you might have to refer to your um, um, previous work on simple interest. Um, simple int interest usually has a principal amount the rate of interest and the time. The time could be in years, usually in years anyway. So um, the formula is the principle multiplied by the rate, multiplied by the time, all divided by 100. So you use that to get the simple interest. So I wish you good luck with that and I hope you are able to do these two tasks. Thank you for watching this lesson. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please click on the subscribe button. And if you like this video, which I know you like, click on the like button. See you in the next lesson.